Hi everyone, welcome back to the interview. I'm your host, Susan Lee McDonald. Today's guest on the interview is considered to be the John Lennon of Korea. He is an internationally renowned musician who's brought folk rock to Korea. He is none other than Han Desu. I can't wait for you all to meet him. He's a hoot. At the CBS studios in Yangcheonggu, Seoul, the site of Han Desu's live radio program, our guest is here every morning at 9 a.m. with his co-host Son Su. His production team bursts into laughter with one of his comments. I am I'm very creative in the early morning hours. That's when I do most of my writing. Uh, I compose a lot of songs, but because I'm working in the radio, those precious hours are gone. But I need the money. <laughs> Every morning he speaks sincerely into the microphone and accompanies his listeners as they start their day. <laughs> she's my teacher. <laughs> ah, she's my guide. Your mother. Korean, my mother. My mother. No. His sister. 굉장히 그 순수하신 어떻게 전화에 저런 그 순수한 마음을 가지고 있을까? 그래서 저는 한 대수 씨를 굉장히 좋아해요. 영원히 자유로우면서도 영원히 아주 순수한 맑은 분이기 때문에. The man who sparked the Korean folk rock movement in the 1970s, a vanguard of the hippie movement sparking controversy in a time of dictatorship. A singer-songwriter who still influences artists well into his 60s, Han Dae-su. Han Dae-su was born into an elite family in Korea. Han spent most of his childhood alone with his thoughts. Music, his only companion and savior. First introducing folk rock to Korea in 1968, his music became very popular amongst intellectuals and artists. Unfortunately, his revolutionary music was censored and many of his songs were banned. We will hear Han Dezu's story firsthand today on the interview. Hello, Mr. Han. Hello, Susan. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. Thank right. you so much for being here on oh. our show on The Interview. Why, it's a great honor. I love that title, Interview. Yes, well, we're wow. hoping to view your Ooh. inner side today. <laughs> That's great. All right, I'm ready. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, you are known as the godfather of Korean folk music. You're a singer-songwriter extraordinaire. No, may I make a correction? Sure. Me and James Brown. <laughs> Oh, yes. <laughs> Will you be doing a little dance here for us later? <laughs> oh, that part, no, he's <laughs> way above me. <laughs> well, you did that with your songs and your lyrics, yes? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've got a, a contagious laugh. Yeah. I know every time that uh, you're on camera, um, on stage, you're making everyone you know, cry with your music, laugh with your humor. Um, how how is it that you become so animated when you're with people? Oh, you know, I um, I try to be as original as possible, and uh, I um, study a lot of the past performers and past musicians. Also, I also uh, did a lot of listening to classical music mm -hmm. when I was younger mm -hmm. because of my grandfather. Mm. And the basic purpose of music is to soothe the soul, mm. to uh, heal the wounded, okay, heal the hurt, and also to inspire. And uh, you can only do that if music is there. It has to be good music. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't just inspire people with dang, 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 hey, get inspired. You can't do that. You just have to get into it. The music is something that I know is very dear to my life, and right. I listen to music probably more than four to five hours a day from, wow. from place to place. And I'm just curious, is this why you have us here in this like music studio? Right. To, uh, <laughs> yes, we to, we're to represent here. You? <laughs> the top of the line a digital studio in mm -hmm. Gyeonggi University. Mm -hmm. And you're here doing your next album. I will be doing my next album right here. Actually, this is the first time I'm seeing the studio. <laughs> so I made this uh, intentionally 
uh, to to record in this studio. Wonderful! Yes, yes. Wow. Well, thank you for inviting us <laughs> here, where your uh, your energy for the next uh, album uh, is yes, just kind of brewing. So. Right. <laughs> I think so. God, God, you started singing and songwriting when mm. you were 16. Right. And tell us about your time as a teenager. Right. Singing and songwriting. Well, I had a very uh, nice, very good childhood. Mm -hmm. When I was traveling back and forth to New York and Seoul and Busan, uh, my grandfather being quite uh, wealthy and mm -hmm. respected. I was able to come back and forth to United States with ease or when when it was a time during where people had no passports even. Mm -hmm. They didn't even know what passport looked like. So I had a fortunate uh, surroundings. However, I was very lonely mm. because I did not have my parents and I remember sitting all by myself uh, on the second floor of the, it's, it's called SATEC, mm -hmm. the residential area for the uh, deans and presidents mm -hmm. of the university, mm -hmm. you know, and it's all surrounded by high brick walls and mm -hmm. uh, guards in the front. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. I'm not really able to go out and, and uh, I'm always in there. Of course, it's wealthy, but I'm very, very lonely. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what got me uh, started to write music, mm -hmm. poetry, Mm -hmm. to express myself, mm. my emptiness. Wow. Uh, Do you remember your first ever song that you ever wrote? I, yeah, I remember. I, it was called Till That Day. You know, that it's an uh, aspiration that I will meet my love mm -hmm. one day. So wait until that day. I, at that time, I did not have my love. <laughs> I had no girlfriend or anything. How old were you? I'm just dreaming. <laughs> I must have been about 16 years old. Mm -hmm. Yes, and... Uh, I was in the second floor writing songs, and then uh, other songs like Parangwana, mm -hmm. The Wind and Die, mm -hmm. which is a, uh, quite a big hit in Korea, yes. and the Hengbogye Nara, Land of Happiness. Mm -hmm. uh, those were the songs I wrote in Long Island. Yes. But all through the time, I was always playing the guitar and mm -hmm. singing, mm -hmm. whether on my own or uh, in the 60s. Uh, there were coffee shops where you would uh, where you would sing in front of the uh, guests and uh, check yourself out, you know, whether your music is good or bad, mm -hmm. and you would uh, pass around the hat. Mm -hmm. They were putting coins, mm -hmm. sometimes a dollar, and uh, there would be some comments made. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would wait in line every Friday or Saturday mm -hmm. with the guitar, and you would take the stage for 10, 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. So I used to do that all the time. I wanted to test the waters, and then, um, in the 60s in New York City, uh, it was the mecca of counterculture, mm -hmm. so-called hippie movement, right? And it was crazy, really. It was really crazy. I was living in East Village. There was this whole movement going on, mm -hmm. free love, free sex, music everywhere. Fillmore East was two blocks from where I lived. Wow. And that's where you know people like Jimi Hendrix would come, Jim mm -hmm. Morrison, Janis Joplin, I don't know, all the, the Allman Brothers, Paul Butterfield Blues Band, mm -hmm. Charles Lloyd, they were playing every weekend. <laughs> Now, you also had to go into a military draft, yes, too, in Korea. Yes, exactly. Right? Now, during those uh, confusing times, mm -hmm. my uncle, uh, the brother of my mother, big businessman, mm -hmm. uh, came to look for me. And mm -hmm. he came to my East Village apartment. He was in shock and awe. <laughs> Using George Bush's term, <laughs> shocking. Oh, <laughs> is, is this a life? He couldn't believe it, you know. Wow. So I said, Look, came back to my mother, 
No, they're very wealthy. They're big business people. Yeah, and uh, you know, your son is. I, I don't think he's going to make it. You know, mm -hmm. he's, he's in a terrible situation. I think, sister, you have to bring him back. So my mother is writing to me in this aerogram, foldable aerogram, with her tears. I could see the spot of her tears. So when I received my mother's letter, so I said, okay, maybe I should go back to Korea. I haven't seen my mother for another, what, 14 years, I guess. So I came back to Seoul. What was that like? Whoa, man! Can you imagine from East Village to Seoul? And this is Park jung government. Wow. <laughs> Yushin. <laughs> Yushin government. Yes, you it know? was a dictatorial government at the time. Dictatorship mm. at its peak. Wow. Wow, and you know, you couldn't even walk the street because the the cops were, were catching you to uh, shave your hair off. Mm -hmm. And even the ladies with their miniskirts, they were measuring the uh, the length of the <laughs> miniskirts. Wow. And uh, it was crazy. I couldn't believe it. And was your hairstyle same. the same yeah, as it is very similar now to this. then? Right. right. Can you imagine? Did people come up to you and ask to right. cut I, your hair? They would say, are you a boy or are you a girl? You know, they have never seen anybody like me. Because even in in the States, it was quite a new mm -hmm. uh, phenomenon. So mm -hmm. uh, I was teased a lot. And um, my mother took care of me, of course. Mm -hmm. I, she had a separate house for me. Mm -hmm. So I was living there. And I played my music, did my photography. And then I played in Saint Sibon, mm -hmm. uh, a very famous, actually it was the only place you could perform live in Seoul. Mm -hmm. I met Twin Folio, Song Chang Shi, Yoon Young Ju, mm -hmm. Jo Young Nam, all these guys were playing there. Yes. So I played my uh, songs, incredible reception. However, the atmosphere of the society was stifling, mm -hmm. was very oppressive. Soon enough, I was drafted because Korea was also participating in Vietnam War mm -hmm. at that time, quite mm -hmm. a bit. Mm -hmm. Quite a bit of our soldiers participated mm -hmm. uh, in the war and died, mm -hmm. many, many victims. Mm -hmm. So I was drafted in the Navy. In the Navy. In the Navy. <laughs> <laughs> Not the village people. <laughs> <laughs> or is it? I don't know. <laughs> What was your experience like in the Navy? Did, the you, Navy? did you actually have to cut your hair? Oh yeah, shaved. Completely shaving off. I was... Uh, <coughs> um, the training was very, very bad. Mm. The boot camp, mm -hmm. oh, horrific. I was in so much torture. And then we had a corporate punishment. Wow. Were and you able to do any music at that time when you no, were in not at all. the Navy? No. Not at all. Not in the Navy. What was life for you after the Navy? After I came out, it was shocking because everybody wanted me. Mm. in all these record companies. Mm -hmm. Then I find out that two of my songs have become a hit while I was gone. Wow. What happened was uh, Yang Hyun, mm -hmm. top singer at that time, recorded my uh, Hengbok and Ara, mm -hmm. Land of Happiness, and that became a hit. And Kim Mingi, another very popular singer, uh, sang Parang uh, The Wind and mm -hmm. I, and also that became a hit. So I was a, a sought-after songwriter, and they wanted to record me and I made my first album wow. right afterwards. That's incredible. So when you made your first album uh -huh. and uh, that came out, what was the reception? The reception was uh, revolutionary because the album cover itself was mm -hmm. very, uh, 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 very un-Korean. Mm -hmm. Nothing that the Korean public have, has ever seen. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the first song, Mul Jam Ju Song, crazy because yeah. it starts out without a, an intro, uh, intro introductory uh, instrument. Mm -hmm. Usually a song would have a certain lead part mm -hmm. of instrumental coming in, mm -hmm. da, 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 and then the voice comes out, right? Mm -hmm. This was this would be like, Mul Jam, and then the instrument comes out, right? It's like, oh my God, what is this, you know? <laughs> this is ridiculous. <coughs> to, you know, I was just 
trying to be uh, express my uh, anger. Mm. I mean, not only about society, but you know, going back towards my father or my mm -hmm. mother, and so forth. Uh, so it was just what was what was inside of me mm. during the years in the Navy. Mm -hmm. And what happened was when that song came out and that album came out, the young people, college students, associated my anger with theirs. Mm. Their lack of freedom, mm -hmm. you know, their lack of money mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. All this just, you know, we struck the uh, same chord yeah. with the young people. It sounds like they, they really feel that music and right. it resonated with, with them. Right. very very deeply it's exactly. like an anthem for right. a, a protest anthem almost. right exactly wow. and you know water symbolizes love mm -hmm. uh, money freedom um, everything mm -hmm. a unification of north and south mm -hmm. everything and after that song then what was the next song that really just kind of hit home for um, most people I would say uh, Mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. it's wind and I is very mm -hmm. poetic. Mm -hmm. Actually, I loved uh, uh, Shelley when I was going to school, high school in, in yes. Long Island. And uh, uh, he had a s poetry called Ode to the Western Wind, mm -hmm. which I really appreciated. Mm -hmm. And I, that image became my song called mm -hmm. Wind and I. Wow. So you draw a lot of your inspiration from your personal experiences. Oh yeah, only. Only, yes. The anger, the right, angst, right. The, the frustration that you, you felt. Right. And when you express that in your music, um, why do you think it is that people could really feel that angst too? Um, looking back, I think uh, during that time, music was only for pleasure, for dancing or drinking mm -hmm. and relaxing. Mm -hmm. But there was not that, ma that many music where you would sit down and uh, think for yourself mm -hmm. and think about the world or the government or the political structure. Mm -hmm. So I think I, my songs kind of um, ignited the need. Mm -hmm. And I always was thirsty anyway mm -hmm. for love and life and mm -hmm. money. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and then I did marry a, a very lovely lady who was a fine artist, mm -hmm. uh, graduate from Hongdae mm -hmm. Famous School. And uh, before I was banned, we spent our f early years mm -hmm. in Seoul. Mm -hmm. And uh, after I got banned, uh, a band, I uh, had to have some income because mm -hmm. I'm newly married. So I started working for Korea Herald. Mm -hmm. Right, in the culture desk. Okay. Right, for a while. So <laughs> it was great. <laughs> I'm like, I, looking back, you know, I had so many different jobs. It's crazy. That's incredible. That doesn't seem real. Wow. You know? I, I want to go back, uh -huh. backtrack a little bit to okay. you being banned. Okay. So the government banned your uh -huh. songs right. because it was too controversial. Right. People just were identifying too much with the angst right. and the anger mm. that you had. And right. so were you, were you exiled? Were you told to leave? Did you leave on your own accord? How did that come about? Okay, I was banned from all radio, television, magazine, recording, and uh, any kind of public ex mm. uh, appearance. So even the albums that was already out, was uh, uh, they collected it and confiscated. destroyed, confiscated, mm. right? So, so I had no place to go musically, so I'm working in the newspaper. So my wife says, you know, you got to spread your wings. You got all this music coming out of your brains and uh, no place to perform or, or to record. So I don't see this uh, ban being lifted any, anytime mm -hmm. soon. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the government's intentions and the strength of the uh, Park chung government. It looked like he was there forever. Mm -hmm. He will be there forever. Mm -hmm. So my wife suggested that I go back to New York and perform mm -hmm. there. And I said, well, New York is a whole different ball game. You know, you're yeah. talking about internationally renowned musicians mm -hmm. coming there competing. You know, this Bujon Juso is just not going to do it. You know, I really got to form a band that's mm -hmm. going to be truly amazing. 
But she was right, though. I had no opportunity anymore. Mm -hmm. So I did go back to New York mm -hmm. and formed the band called Genghis Khan. Genghis Khan being the only conqueror who conquered the West. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I had these big dreams, and uh, we played downtown New York scene. That's CBGB's, True the Heller. Yeah. But we, we did it for one year, a little more. So my wife was working as a, a visual merchandise uh, director mm -hmm. for, you know, like Bloomingdale's. Mm -hmm. Mm, what's the other famous one? Saks Fifth Avenue? Sa not Saks. Bergdorf? She Bergdorf. She did Bergdorf Goodman, uh, Shari Vari, uh, Henry Bendel, all these places. So she was doing good. Mm -hmm. And I was also doing good working in commercial photography and playing on the weekends. But with two of us, two of our income combined was not enough to uh, support the band. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was just so much money involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, I wished I had some support. All artists need financial support. Yes. Even Van Gogh had Theo, mm -hmm. his brother, right? Uh, but I didn't. So we continued for about a year and a half. And I said, well, I did my best, no regrets. Mm -hmm. So I kind of um, unwound the strings on my guitar, packed it in. Put it in the corner, oh. and I concentrated on whatever whatever I was doing, which was photography. Oh my love, I've been waiting for your smile. Oh my love, yes I. And you now then met your your second wife. Right, I so, met second wife. Right. So let, tell us about that right. story. Right. Okay. So so all these years in New York, because I I didn't uh, achieve much artistically, uh, and things happen, you know. After a long marriage, of course, I made some mistakes. There was some. Um, Awesome. <laughs> rendezvous here and there, you know. <laughs> a rendezvous. Getting, getting caught and all that. Mm -hmm. You know, New York City is a big city mm -hmm. and uh, things happen. And uh, she was uh, very unhappy about that. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then that happened to her also. Mm -hmm. So we were basically drifting apart. Mm -hmm. And one day, uh, I, I noticed that there was something going on. Uh, so I said, look, baby, let's go to Bahamas, mm -hmm. spend the week there. Maybe we should just do, walk around the beach, just talk, mm -hmm. have a conversation, have some good food. And I think it's, it's needed. You know, it's mm -hmm. been 20 years now. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, she says, okay, fine. I bought the tickets. I'm ready. It's Friday. I'm packing. And she's not coming home. It's already very late. I opened the closet. Her top designer clothes are already gone. Oh, wow. Yeah, and the next morning I get a phone call. I have left you already. Please go to Mr. Soso's office and sign. That was it. Wow. So that was the end of it. Wow. So 20 years, and I got into songwriting even more mm -hmm. because that shocked me so much. You know, you would at least have, no matter how much of a difference there was mm -hmm. or misunderstanding, after 20 years, you were at least say, uh, they sue. It's been great, but I think we're drifting apart. You know, mm -hmm. I want to have a separation. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll take this, I'll take that. You pay the American, uh, you pay this credit card. I, you do, at least you mm -hmm. have a last discussion. No such thing. She was gone. Oh. How did that make you feel? Oh, uh, of course, I, I realized I did a lot of mistakes. At the same time, you know, an ending of two people after 20 years shouldn't be that curt mm -hmm. or that simple. You know, it's not mm -hmm. that simple. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of things involved. But she didn't want to deal with it. Mm -hmm. And um, so I began to live alone. But you know, um, if you live with a partner for 20 years, from age 20 to age 40, uh, in the beginning, you don't realize that uh, you are lonely or anything. But when, once she's gone, mm -hmm. you realize how utterly alone you are. Mm. 
completely alone. Mm. You have nobody to talk to. You wake up in the morning, you make your own coffee, and it's emptiness. Nobody tells you good morning. Mm -hmm. You have nobody to say good morning to. Mm -hmm. You have nobody to discuss about what's going on in your office. You're having coffee quietly. All you hear is the sound of the clocks ticking. Mm -hmm. Or the very empty sound of an uh, anchor woman <laughs> in the morning mm -hmm. news. Mm -hmm. And you're having coffee and just drove me crazy. And then sometimes I would be talking to myself. I would look in the mirror and say, hey, Sue, all right, you can do it, man. All right, let's go. Go to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking to myself. Mm -hmm. And um, I couldn't handle it. So I, I decided, okay, that's it. So I went to Italy mm -hmm. on a lonely trip by myself, a beautiful place. And um, in Firenze, mm -hmm. uh, I'm, I went to a studio that did fashion work, mm. and I was working in a very prestigious, huge place in New York City at that time. Everybody knew the place. Mm -hmm. And I go to the madam, I say, oh, you're from New York City? Yeah, I'm from Color House. Color Wheel, I mean. So she said, oh, Color Wheel, oh, okay. That's All right. the name of the company that yeah, you're working yeah. with. Okay. So I'm kind of enticed by this whole situation. Came back to New York, and I'm thinking of quitting soon, giving mm -hmm. them three weeks notice. And all of a sudden, a Russian assistant that I had mm -hmm. says, look, I got a beautiful apartment in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. One bedroom, great price. I believe he's at 500 at that time. Wow. It was a great price. And what at, year at was that, this? Well, this is 20 years ago. Okay. Going red was about 700. Mm -hmm. So it was 200 cheaper than most. So I said, all right. Uh, his name was Alex, right? Okay, Alex. Sounds like a great bargain. So I said, but I'm going to Italy and I'm going to Firenze. So, no, no, you gotta check this place out. And mm -hmm. guess what? This, the lady who owns the apartment uh, is Mongolian. I said, Mongolia, really? All right, let's check it out. So after work we went and I, was, I saw this Eurasian lady. Mm -hmm. Gorgeous, mm. beautiful body, mm. you know? She would be considered the uh, the then version of Jessica Gomez, all right? Beautiful shape. Mm -hmm. She's in the kitchen looking at me like this. Her eyes are slightly slanty, mm -hmm. but very, very, uh, I could see that she's from a big country, you know? Mm -hmm. Very open-minded. So she was, what are you cooking? I asked her, I am, I'm cooking chicken liver. She came from Moscow, Im just immigrated. Mm -hmm. So obviously she, she doesn't have that much money. So I'm having chicken liver. Would you like some? Yes, please. I love chicken liver. Mm -hmm. And then he says, she says, why don't you go down and get me some bottle of vodka? <laughs> so I go down and get a bottle of vodka, <laughs> having shots. <laughs> the, the more shot I, get, I take in, more beautiful she's becoming. <laughs> After five shots, she's Miss America. <laughs> After six shots, she's become Miss World. <laughs> That's what happens, I couldn't go home. <laughs> so I'm, I had never had vodka in my life. Oh, I never knew wow. it was that strong. I could not move. Yeah, it's not so you. <laughs> oh, no. I just could not get off of my chair. That's how bad mm. I was. So she says, no, no, you can't go home. So she made me a little bed in her living room. Mm -hmm. And you know, she even pulled, out, pulled my pants down and took my shirt off. I said, wow. This is have, like having a wife. Huh? <laughs> mm -hmm. This is after four years of living alone. Mm -hmm. So I proposed to her after two months of, uh, of uh, having uh, dating her. Oh, wow. After only two months. So this is your wife, Oksana? Right, <laughs> presently. <laughs> wow. What a story. Two, two months, wow. right. <laughs> When you think about your own relationship mm -hmm. with your wife, mm -hmm. um, uh, from my understanding, she's going through a very difficult time very period. Very difficult, right. Would you tell us about that? Yes, uh, she has a, a alcoholism problem mm -hmm. and uh, she's getting treated, mm -hmm. sometimes rehab. Uh, most of the times, AA meetings, mm -hmm. uh, but it's a very difficult thing because um, 
uh, she's in she has inherited that disease from the family. Mm -hmm. Basically, she has no more family left. Mm. Mother, father, aunt and uncle. Everybody's gone. And she's mm -hmm. only 41. Mm -hmm. So she's the only one left. I see. So very difficult situation. And uh, I don't call that something that's, that you can cure mm. uh, in one day or mm -hmm. cure at all. Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of uh, controlling your urge. Your, your your desire to mm -hmm. <clears throat> it's it's like controlling your desire every day mm -hmm. there's no cure for it actually. alcoholism um, there are so many different camps on oh, yeah. what they say is the cause of, right, of alcoholism right. but once someone is an alcoholic right. there are a lot of different types of rehab oh yes and um, I know AA has mm -hmm. been very successful for mm -hmm. a lot of people yeah. and other people go through other detox centers and right. whatnot what is it like for you on a daily basis with your wife? Has she really kicked it, or is she still kind of no, in the no, heat of it? No, it's going to be an, uh, it's always has been and will be an ongoing battle. Mm. Uh, most important thing is uh, uh, instead of criticizing, mm -hmm. uh, it's best to understand, try to Absolutely. support. Lots of hugs. Mm -hmm. Oh, baby, it'll be okay. Oh, okay, let's have some food, you know. Mm -hmm. The important thing is to. Uh, give that person some food. Mm -hmm. Usually they refuse any kind of food. Yes. You know, when you're binging, mm -hmm. no food. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Once the food gets in, then she's, she's going to come back to the cycle. It's mm -hmm. always a cycle. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, it's very tough. It's tougher because I have a daughter who's four years old. And, and do you uh, care for your daughter? I don't want her to be affected. Mm -hmm. But I don't see how she's not going to. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, she, that's what she sees already. So. Mm -hmm. That is a, a very, very hard thing for me to deal with, mm -hmm. especially I'm already 65 and I'm not that young with a heart condition. Uh, my colleague in heart condition, um, although I don't like the guy that much, is Dick Cheney. <laughs> <laughs> me and Dick, we go, we go. <laughs> back a long ways. What type of heart condition do you have? <laughs> Pretty bad, just, just like Dick Cheney, you know. Uh, it's called arrhythmia. Arrhythmia, yes. Uh, and, uh, well, I should have had the surgery a long time ago, but mm -hmm. I'm refusing it. Because I have seen cases, if it is not successful, mm -hmm. that you become even worse. Mm -hmm. So I'm just taking lots of pills. Uh, so, basically my daily schedule is going to work in the morning, coming back. Uh, I call them my two daughters, mm -hmm. uh, taking care of my two daughters. Uh, I cook all the time. Mm -hmm. My bliss point at this point is uh, uh, my daughter's well-being. When I see her smile, Daddy, I love you. I love your dinner. Uh, let's go out. Uh, and she holds my hand. I mean, nothing gets me more excited than that. In fact, I like it more than getting a hit song. Although, I would love to have an international hit song. <laughs>
Satchel. Is that happening or what? Two and a half minutes, the whole Satchel was happening. That's a big theater. Wow. <laughs> Two minutes, that's a long time. So all you hear is the sound of the air conditioner. Wow. And the buzzing of the amp the, the electric currents. Mm -hmm. You know, this big wattage going, getting fitting in. Zzz, and the air conditioner, everybody's like this. <laughs> right? <laughs> and no, that was the best part. And you know, when they came out, they said, I never knew silence was that good. <laughs> because you cannot have silence anywhere in this world. Yeah. There was always noise everywhere. Mm -hmm. But you're in a one of the best concert halls in, in the world mm -hmm. with nothing but silence. You're experiencing silence. Wow, wow. So they really did it. And at the end of it, standing ovation. Standing ovation! <laughs> so, you know, everybody's asking me afterwards, how did you come up with that idea? The performing silence mm -hmm. with this, all these people, I, th I think about 5,000 people, Sergio hours. Uh, how did you come up with the idea? You know, that's what you call too much, too many drugs during the childhood. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, I got that idea from uh, John Cage. Mm. John Cage had a number in the 60s mm -hmm. called Silence. Mm. His was, was three minutes something. Mm -hmm. He sat on the piano, went like this. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's crazy because sometimes we have too many music. Wow. Right. That's classic. Right. Did you record Silence too? I ha yes, I did, I did record Silence in my past album. Wow. It was great. In New York City, um, I had an open mic in my studio, but, but there was this buzzing of somebody vacuuming somewhere. <laughs> and then it was all quiet and they would go, mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, I would just, mm -hmm. just, you know, it was very good. It was, very nice if you took some, you know, had a little wine and whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, uh, like, oh. <laughs> and I hear that there is a guitar that's being made in your honor. Tell us about that. Wow, that's it is a great honor because there's a Toronto-based company called Caporelli. Mm -hmm. um, they contacted me and said, uh, Mr. Hahn, we would like to make a guitar to your liking mm -hmm. as your model. I said, wow, I heard of Eric Clapton model, but wow, that's incredible. Wow. So they also understood that uh, Korea has a resurgence of guitar players right mm -hmm. now. Um, actually, a lot of housewives are buying guitars, and a lot of young people too. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, yeah, so I like my body to be a little smaller, great pickup, the best pickup. Mm -hmm. I want a digital tuner. I want a separate um, jack for mm -hmm. the uh, amplification, mm -hmm. aside from the strap jack. So they met my requirements. That's incredible. Two colors, sunburst and black. Wow. What color would you like? <laughs> Do I get one? <laughs> I can arrange it. <laughs> oh, a guitar factory in Yanjushi, Gyeonggi-do. Wow. The guitar factory director, yeah. Mr. Lee, is here to greet Han, and off they yeah. are to see the new guitar. Yeah, this is a great guy. 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 Han Desu is a great guy. This is a great guy. Han Desu carefully inspects the guitar yeah. all around. He thanks Mr. Lee for his hard work, and Mr. Lee is just as glad to see Han's reaction. Han Tae Soo's music is very loved and also respected. So, when we were doing the guitar making, we wanted to Han Tae Soo's guitar once again. We had such a desire. Mr. Lee shows Han Tae Soo around the factory. We are able to catch a glimpse of the guitars being painted and glazed. Han's eyes widen with amazement. Another area we come across here radiates heat upon entering. After the guitars are initially shaped, they're sent to this room to be dried. His first time witnessing the guitar making process. Right, I just now I had a tour and I did not realize it was that complex. There's so many procedures involved and because it's handmade, 
Uh, you just have to wait all the time. Usually before when I bought a guitar and said $2,000, I would say, wow, that's too expensive. Now I realize it's not really expensive at all compared to the work that's involved. At last, the time has arrived for the world to hear the first chord from Handesu's guitar. I will use this album, or this guitar for the new album. Even in the short time that he was able to strum his guitar, he was lost in sound. But tonight, I, I don't think I will be sleeping. I've been playing with this guitar all night long. <laughs> his new guitar in hand, it's off to a music room. He said that there was one person he wanted to be the first to see his guitar. Wow, it's the face of Korea's underground music scene, Kang Sane. <laughs> Seeming both jealous and intrigued at the release of Handesu's personalized guitar, Kang Sane. Like a true musician, he embraces the guitar against his body right away. ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっと、ちょっ
my, my guess is that uh, you, because you have so many fans here in Korea, right. um, you've probably thought of what type of legacy you'd like to leave for many people to think of you. Yes, um, I've been uh, asked the question often. Uh, mm. Musically right now, I think I've done almost what I wanted. Uh, mm. I even have um, uh, my music book out mm -hmm. with all the notes so people can rearrange and mm -hmm. uh, play their instruments. Um, I have several books out also. So musically, I think I've done every, everything. Since you want to see my performance again, then I gotta, I have to work on it uh, <laughs> within a year or so. But <laughs> usually, I think musically, I think I've done it. Mm -hmm. Right now, my biggest concern is raising my daughter. Mm -hmm. Her name is Yang Ho. Mm -hmm. uh, English name is Michelle. Mm -hmm. Michelle being the Greek name uh, deriving from uh, the gift of God. Mm -hmm. That's what Michelle means. That's so sweet. Right, gift of God. And uh, I like to raise her uh, as normal as possible mm -hmm. because uh, I mentioned to you the situation in my family. Mm -hmm. We are quite dysfunctional. <laughs> <laughs> what family isn't so? Yeah, there's really no normal family. <laughs> but we are trying to be functionally dysfunctional. Okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> we <We're> try. <trying. laughs> <laughs> well, so. with you as the head of the family, um, I can imagine that with a lot of love, right. I mean, you, you seem to just exude love for your family, and yes, I, I know that love. that is right. going to be a healing right. effect in and of itself. Right, and, I hope so. And I just wish you all the best with your family and your, your daughter, your career. You still are so, you're so fun, you're, your laugh is so contagious. <laughs> I can only imagine that you still have many, many years ahead of you to give a lot of people joy with your singing. Thank you so much, <laughs> Susan. Thank you so much for uh, being with us here right. today. I had a great time, thank you. Me too. Right. <laughs>